everyone. Welcome to our graphic design stream with Alex Lazarus. Welcome, Alex. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everyone in chat. Say what's up to Alex. He is uh, he's one of you. You might have recognized his name in chat before. You're a resident creeper, aren't you? It is true, yeah. <laughs> chat it, creeper, I should it say. It pays to chat and win. That's very true, yeah. <laughs> they, have you won the chat and win? No, but I think this counts as winning now. Yeah. So. That's true. I'll take it. Okay, cool. We will be doing a <laughs> chat and win later, so stick around for that. Yeah, you don't want to miss it. Mm -mm. Lay flat technology. Lay flat technology, <laughs> I've heard. Uh, if you're new to Adobe Live, welcome. We're here on Behance, be.net slash live is the best place to watch. Look at all these beautiful Alexes in chat. Yo. And yo, Shauna. What's yo. up, Shauna? Hey, Shauna. <laughs> Let's see. We got Tim, JC. Who else do we see? Hmm. Raveline. Ooh, cool name. I like the ha end half of your name. It's like mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lost says shout out to all the Creative South folks. Oh, man. There's so many. Yeah. They're like invade everything. It's awesome. It's a good invasion. Yeah. For sure. Are you going this year? I'm not. Oh. I know. Well, sad. <laughs> okay. Well, on that sad note, I know. Um, yeah, Alex. We can just end the stream now. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs> uh, do you want to introduce yourself and let us know what you're going to be working on today? Hi, guys. I'm Alex Lazarus. Um, I run a little boutique independent design firm in Portland, Oregon. Uh, I used to live here in San Francisco and decided I want more rain. Oh, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm in Portland with a bunch of other really incredible creatives. And so yeah, that's love it. cool. John says that he's watching from PDX. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Very cool. And Diana says watching from Portugal. So that's also very cool. Yeah, it's like Portland, but with other letters and with completely Chugol. other side of the company. Yeah. The world. There you go. Uh, Valeria, this is the challenge video. So Valeria, we're going to be working on some branding today. If you want to rewatch the challenge video from Val, you can always do that. But we are going to be reviewing challenge entries at 1.30. So you have an hour and a half to get those submitted on Discord. And then Alex and I will be looking at your submissions, giving some critiquing uh, before you actually go and post them on social media. And then, like I mentioned, in about 30 minutes, we're going to be giving away this Moo notebook with lay flat technology. Check it out. Check it out. Ooh. It even comes with a sweet sleeve. Yes. Keep the sleeve. Put yeah. all your it's awesome. notebooks in it. There you go. Uh, but until then, we're just going to get started. So tequila, right? So tequila. Tequila. So this is a personal side project thing. I think it ties really well into Val's uh, like creative challenge. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like this is something that I've been wanting to do a lot more of. So I started off one of early design agencies that I was working at, did a lot of packaging work, a lot of branding work for liquor and alcohol and hospitality. So uh -huh. that's kind of my background. I love that stuff. Over the years, I've really started working a lot more in digital. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of want to go back to that. But as creatives, you have to show the work that you want to attract more of. Yes. Um, so. This is a tequila personal project that I want to do. Just live stream it, show you guys the process. If I was to make a tequila brand, how I'd go about it. Mm -hmm. um, so here's kind of some quick inspiration that I pulled. Um, not really inspiration so much as a competitive landscape. Right. Um, and so how I really look at creative problems is heavily in strategy and trying to differentiate in the marketplace before I start designing. Um, so here I've kind of broken down the tequila bottles into three different categories. Um, on the top row, you can kind of start seeing um, more of this like authentic, handmade, handcrafted, bespoke, small batch yeah. distillery style stuff. Totally. Um, and then as you get into the second row, you start getting more into this like filigree section, I would probably call it. It's okay. more of like, you've got very similar aesthetics, um, which I guess I'm cheating because I have two Don Julio bottles next <laughs> to each like other. It's so similar. I was like, whoa, it's crazy. It's like it's a, you know, <laughs> repeating other brands. Um, but both of them, they all kind of have a very similar like black lettering and yeah. ornateness to it. Um, and then the third row is kind of getting into differentiating by bottle. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of this project, I want to go and photograph and print the labels. I have a wonderful friend in Portland who does letterpress work. Uh, and so she's going to help me letter press the labels and then I'll put them on the bottles and then I'll photograph them and try to make it look as real as possible for a client to be like, oh my God, this is a real brand. It looks great. I yeah. can drink it, all that good stuff, which really will help sell the concept. Yeah. And then you'll send one of those bottles to the Adobe Live Studio. Exactly. So it might it. taste like Casamigos. Oh, it just might. Because <laughs> it's literally this <laughs> bottle. Uh, I, but what I did was I essentially, I have um, some photos actually of it. 
Command Shift D. Oh gosh, wrong buttons. That's all right. While you're doing that, uh, Nico's asking, who designed your haircut? Sad, dude. My little brother, <laughs> man. Uh, I have a fantastic hair guy in Portland mm -hmm. who I absolutely love, and I just let him do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. And we kind of started doing this. So my background is in racing motorcycles and skateboards. Oh, really? Uh, I was a downhill professional skateboarder for a lot of my life. Oh. Um, and You're so, not that old. <laughs> well, for like 10 years I was doing it. Okay. Um, and essentially I met this guy, he let me, I just told him do whatever you want. And so we've always done like racing lines. Mm -hmm. And so he'll always just kind of So that's do what that is. Oh, gotta uh, go and, fast. Yeah, go fast. Speed stripes. <laughs> it's like, you know, a Mustang. Mustangs have sh racing stripes. Yeah. You gotta go fast. The horses have the racing stripes. Exactly. <laughs> Um, I can't get my there. bar to work. Oh, there we go. Haha, -ha. come back, Doc. There we go. What's up, Jason? Good to see you, Munir. Shauna. Shauna's talking about the cool uh, Sugar Skull tequila bottles that were kind of hot a couple years ago. Yeah, so exactly. So these are the three Casamigos bottles um, that I went to the store, bought. Now I have it. There are three. I've got a Blanco, a Posado, and an Añejo. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is like my blank canvas. So I just want to make sure that whenever I'm building the labels that I can wrap it and make it look interesting and differentiate in the marketplace. Very cool. Um, but yeah, so like going back to this bottom line, I don't have a crazy interesting bottle. Uh, whenever you're looking for blank bottles, it's really hard because a lot of them get stamped, mm. uh, which is a great design addition and it really helps sell the like high level aspect of it. But mm -hmm. it, is high, it is more pricey and it makes it a little bit hard to like mock it up correctly. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, Kevin's wondering, do you notice that you speed walk a little more now, now that you have the racing stripes? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Especially like the before the haircut and the after haircut, I actually time myself Oh. Uh, just to make sure that it's working correctly. Yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> Shaving off those seconds. <laughs> <laughs> My brother said that the stripes should be straight, but he hit some bumps. Oh, nice. I mean, a good artist or a good creative should be able to adapt to the mistakes. Mm -hmm. So. Totally intentional. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so these bottles, right? So Patron has a very iconic bottle. Yes. Um, Milagro has this silver, bl uh, the Blanco tequila that they have, or I think it's called Milagro Silver. Um, and that's glass blown, hand blown. Um, wow. This one here is actually designed by Chanel. Oh, it looks like perfume. <laughs> it does look like perfume, right? It's like, it's, so it's very spot on. So these people are going into the custom built bottles, uh -huh. which really is a great way to reinforce your brand. Mm -hmm. But for the sake of this project, I don't want to spend the money for a mold. So I won't do that. Um, but you can kind of see how like iconic bottles might stick out on the shelf. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was at the liquor store, I saw a bunch of this artisanal style stuff. And I realized everything in that aisle kind of has this like off white kind of cream colored background. So it feels a little bit more like parchment paper. Yes. Don't want to do that. I want to really oh. change it all up. I don't want to do the distress thing. I want it to feel more inviting. So the backstory for the client or like the customer that I yes. think of this is, is like um, the person who had a rough experience in college has probably not had tequila in a very long time. <laughs> 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 probably like late twenties, early forties. Somebody who's like, all right, I'll give it another try, but mm -hmm. I want to like have a good experience with it and start really sipping it. So it's more of like a whiskey drinker oh. stepping into it. Mm -hmm. So is this um, you? Like, so exactly. <laughs> so I have a friend who's really uh, avid tequila drinker and I cannot for the life of me just drink a straight tequila yet. Yeah. But I'm gonna try it. Okay. Not on stream. Yeah. Not, um, not allowed. <laughs> Maybe later. So I've got some inspiration around some really unique bottles that I really like and for various reasons. Okay, cool. Look at that organization. We love it. You gotta be organized. Uh-huh. Oh no. Um, that's, isn't that the worst when Preview does that? Oh, it's the worst. Why you do this? There's a GIF. So there's a Behance page uh, from, oh no. How do I, I can't GIF it. Spacebar? Spacebar. Oh, nice. there we go. Perfect. Oh, cool. So this is by, I think, Floyd and Floyd, or Lloyd and Lloyd. I think they're out of London. You can check out their Behance. They did this really incredible tequila, and I like how it kind of shows the like journey of the agave plant into the tequila. Yeah. Um, really incredible stuff, incredible photography. Oh, multiple labels on one bottle, that's yeah. so cool. Exactly, yeah. and it does, this, like I love the, the inside print too, you can kind of see yes. as the agave flips around uh -huh. and gets distorted and makes it really 
Really interesting. Cool. Uh, Jordan says, Alex seems like a pretty chill dude. Oh, <laughs> thank you. We can, we can be friends. Yeah. You're not the guy who lives in Portland, right? <laughs> you know? If you're in Portland, right. let me know. <laughs> Who knows? We might have a lot of viewers from Portland. We know we That's have true. one at least. There's a lot of incredible creatives in Portland. Seems like it. Um, again, space bar. <laughs> double click. Um, and this is for their probably Rep Anejo, I think. Uh -huh. But you can, again, same design language. Still really interesting as the labels kind of bounce around. Mm -hmm. Very atypical use of the like cylindrical bottle. Yeah. Um, but. I really love this work. I think this is from Anagram. Uh, most of these I pulled from Behance, so you go give them likes and follows. Mm -hmm. Right now I have like three studios out of Mexico City that I love. It's by Futura, Anagramma, and then Yee Yee Design. Um, they're crushing it. They're That's absolutely awesome. incredible. Um, but I love the typesetting in here. This feels very much like a perfume totally. or a cologne bottle. Mm -hmm. Super nice. The faceting on the lid especially. Yeah, and that's so, like, if you wanted to do this at home, you could do that faceting yourself. Just get the, you know, paper. Mm -hmm. This looks like it's almost like string or a hairband, or you could kind of like yeah. lock it up. Who knows? So this is all stuff you can do at home uh, with just a little bit of effort. Um, and then kind of showing how their brand translates across. So a lot of companies in the tequila industry show the agave plant in mm -hmm. some sort of like abstract form. Um, they did a great job for Della oh, Luz. Yeah, I see yeah. it. It's just so nice. Everything about this is so gorgeous. Um, and then again, you see like the stamping of the bottle really like sets it apart. Right. So it's sim pretty simplistic like label, but then the stamp really helps make it look a little bit nicer too. Mm -hmm. And also has that double label, how there's like two little components. Yeah, on and the front. Jason was saying it reminds him of Chanel and mm -hmm. that's that's spot on. It does have that like the the numbers and all yeah. the, the type even. Totally. Um, again, product photography really helps. So if you are able to print out a label, you can do some really cool stuff, make it feel a little bit holistic. Um, so in the contrast to like typical styles of tequila bottles. I want to do something that's a little bit more type heavy hmm. and then downplay the brand aspect of things. So I need help with the name. I don't have a name yet. Ah. I would love if chat could help me name the brand. Okay. Um, it could be Spanish, it could be English, it could be anything. Mm. Um, I know that the system that I want to do is something type based and kind of playful. Mm -hmm. um, I want it to feel atypical from a typical tequila brand. What's atypical in Spanish? <laughs> I don't know. I was, I found out, I heard, I looked up what hangover was Oh. in Spanish the other day, and then I realized that was probably not a good no. name for a tequila brand. Yeah. Ooh, Luke says Mockingbird. What's up, Luke? Good to see you. Mockingbird, that's Mockingbird a pretty tequila. good one. Mockingbird tequila, yeah. Classic clean, peyote. peyote. <laughs> that's a short and sweet name, for sure. Time to shine, chat. Yes. So we're asking you to yeah. do a collaboration with Alex. Yeah. Give me a name, any mm -hmm. name. Yeah. What would you want this cool artisanal tequila? To Salud. Be Salud's a good one. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Well, maybe we can let them yeah. ruminate on it and gather some names. So essentially, I want to play off the type idea. I want it to kind of feel a little bit more dynamic. So the labels that oh. I'm thinking about is going to be more of like, Blanco, Reposado, and Añejo, where mm -hmm. the type is bouncing around on it. Uh -huh. And so it's, it's really bold and big and in your face. Um, probably gonna do black and white so that it doesn't feel so off-white or cream. Right. Um, huh. Don't some tequilas have scorpions in them? I think it's um, typically like a, a worm, mm -hmm. right? Maybe a scorpion would be... <laughs> Throw one in there, Let's see what just happens. Put it in there. <laughs> yeah, this typeface is gorgeous. This was a, a Behance piece that I saw. Somebody made a custom Campari typeface. So I think wow. they took the Campari thing and translated it out across the full system. Very cool. Ooh, this is a good one from Albert. You could do Sorbo, which is sip. Ooh. Because you want to sip brilliant. on it, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. I don't oh. want this to be a, a shooting tequila mm -hmm. or shots. I like Sorbo. Me Let's too. See. I like that a lot. And it's very round, like the two O's and yeah. the curvy S. Poison, says Kita. Poison. <laughs> Call it poison. <laughs> Call it what it really is. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Let me away. open up a new artboard. So essentially I'm gonna keep all my artboards at a width of a minimum of 1400. Okay. Just so it always translates really well to Behance. Perfect, um, so you've already done your research. I have spent so much time doing Behance posts. It's like an unhealthy obsession. Well, you have a lot of features on Behance, so I think it, it pays off. <laughs> what I'll do for those features. <laughs> those little badges. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's awesome. The Behance community, I love, because I typically spend a lot of time in the strategy process of things, mm -hmm. so that it shows like it, that the work is actually well thought out and it's executed well. Because at the end of the day, I think this is something that a lot of designers could learn from, is like, if I don't like your execution of a concept, it doesn't mean that is a bad execution. It might not be the right fit for the company, mm -hmm. but if you explain why things are, why they are and mm -hmm. how you came to those decision-making processes, I as a hiring manager can be like, oh, this person thinks things yeah, through. You can They're think. very smart mm -hmm. uh, and they, ha they have an eye and they can do a really good job. Yeah, and they can easily fit into whatever, whatever environment that you're exactly. in. Exactly. That's very true. If you want to check out Alex's portfolio, it's behance.net slash Alex Lazarus, or you can just click on his little face in the info tab. Yes, check it out. So you have a lot of text heavy design. Hmm. Like it's very confident. I'm realizing this now. <laughs> but it's, it shows that you're confident with your typesetting. I, I'm the least confident with my typesetting. Really? It is completely faking it. <gasps> yeah, I don't I think I'm- tell. I I don't know. I type to me is an interesting challenge sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's really fun and it's great, but then sometimes like, tracking out things. I'm like, why do we track them out? Yep. Um, I didn't go to design school, so I'm self-taught. Yeah, let's hear some more about your background. Um, so I kind of feel really lucky when I get these really big clients and stuff and mm -hmm. have a really good time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I I don't know. Typesetting is an interesting one. I, I, yeah, I can always learn. I think that's the thing is like, I'm always improving, always learning, mm -hmm. always trying new things. Um, You're not scared. Not scared. <laughs> a, a lot of my stuff is like, I have, I started playing soccer as a child and was a goalkeeper, so mm -hmm. you get scored on a lot. You have to pick yourself up. So I'm used to like falling over and like crashing a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and as like a high speed skateboarder and motorcyclist, yeah. <laughs> hopefully you don't crash too much that way though. I crash all the time. Don't tell my parents. They're oh, probably no. here somewhere. Uh, here somewhere, are they yeah. here? They're, they're here. <laughs> Mom? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, crashing, I mean, as long as you can get back up and like learn from your mistakes, yes. it's a really good way of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm also one of those weird people that uses a mouse and the trackpad. Ooh, yeah. tell me more. Comes from like my gaming background, I think, as a yeah, PC gamer. Like, I'm so used to doing like <laughs> WASD, so yes. I'll typically use a trackpad on my Mac and just pinch and zoom. Oh. And then I'll click and drag with the mouse. Okay. So if you ever see that and you're wondering, well, how is he doing so many weird things? Yeah. It's, that's why. You're a true wizard. I try. <laughs> um, so if you press Command Shift H, it makes your artboards disappear. Oh, I didn't know that. And it makes it all white. So it's really nice if you're just exploring stuff, you can mm -hmm. kind of just drag and pull things over right. and not be so stuck with things. Nice. Um, so I got this beautiful typeface because it's a little bit funky. It's a little bit fresh, feels really nice. Um, it's called Trailers Variable. Nice, where um, did you get it? I got it from My Fonts. Cool. Um, Cause I was trying to find a really funky, interesting typeface. Mm -hmm. um, was there some more names or is it just Sorbo? Uh, I think Sorbo winner? was the best one. I think, I think so. I think you might be right. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just try to make a bold version and create outlines uh, on group, Command Shift G. And then I'm gonna start messing with Ooh. like the sizing a bit and mm -hmm. seeing how I wanna start laying things out. Cool, so outlining your text is a great way to be able to actually just play with them as objects. Correct, absolutely. Um, definitely not the best way if you wanna constantly change no. things. No, no, so no. So like no. if I wanted to make this like a light version, right now I'd be kinda screwed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's purely for playtime. Exactly, so typically, especially with the kerning or if I'm polishing up like a type set, mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll do that. So like the Atticus project that I did, I got like a really nice typeface and then I did a lot of custom work with it. Oh, interesting. Um, and so you kind of just start playing. Yeah, so like the logo type, mm -hmm. I kind of get the basis going and then start messing with the actual um, like anchor points and making sure that everything was like geometric and balanced mm -hmm. and start finessing it in the outline state. Gotcha. rather than just leaving it as its own kind of mm -hmm. 
one-off type face. Yeah, that's one of the really cool things about being a designer is you take these things that other people have made, but then you make it totally your own or bespoke. Yeah, absolutely. Hot word. It's super fun that way. Mm-hmm. Oh, Tim says he still likes the Tequila Mockingbird branding. Tequila Mockingbird's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of a mouthful. It is a lot of it's a, a mouthful. Lot of characters. I mean, it could work, but I don't. I think if I'd use the Tequila Mockingbird, then I would have to go very Mockingbird heavy. Oh yeah. With the branding. Which is funny because um, you said Atticus, and it's like Tequila Mockingbird, Atticus Finch. Man, we should. Yeah, we should go. Crossover, <laughs> <laughs> collab. I think we're, next time we have to do a Grapes of Wrath thing, and then do a wine label. Ooh, <laughs> yes. That could be a personal project. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you ever need also inspiration for wine labels, um, there's a firm out of, I believe, New York and London called Stranger and Stranger. Hmm. Their work is incredible. Strange and Stranger. Incredible. They did those really cool, I think they were Most Wanted, I think was it was called. Oh. And it was like uh, wine labels of like villains that were kind of old timey villains. Oh, and you could do the, the AR yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And so I had an AR thing mm -hmm. where you could like bring up your phone and it would tell you the story about yes, all of them. Yes, I remember those. But yeah, their work is incredible. Oh, isn't it cool how you can make your whole living on just this kind of product, like yeah. bottles? <laughs> Look at how like all the experience that goes into making such an incredible product like that, like getting into the matte finishes mm -hmm. and the typesetting and oh, it's it's incredible. Yeah, and since these kind of drinks have such a history, you really need to know about like the time periods yeah, and exactly. the design at that time. Really interesting. So stranger and stranger that was everyone. Yeah, the set nineteen uh, crime wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you that go. Was it? Yeah, was there. It? Yeah, I think what's that one right there? The on the prisoner snitch too, and the, that cool like way of just ripping the the paper up too. Mm -hmm. It's like. Man. Do you think that's hand ripped by someone? I don't know. <laughs> it would be really hard to do that Just constantly, Just printed right? that way, laser cut. I don't know. Who's to say? Somebody has Stranger and Stranger, get back to us. Let us yes. Know. yes, 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 yes. So what I'm thinking about is I really like the capital letters on these. It's really kind of funky. You get some like really interesting like layers in there. Um, but this may or may not work. Somebody was saying Sorbo is already a tequila. Let me make sure is it? that that's not true. I don't see any. Well, Sorbo, you're about to get a free rebrand. There you go. <laughs> no, that'd be pretty funny. PayPal Alex Lazarus. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think it's a full brand. We good. Yay. <laughs> yeah, ripped paper is always attractive, says Ashi. Yeah, there's so many really cool ways of separating out what you're working on. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, John says it might be too clean to be actually hand ripped. Could be. But it has the effect. Yeah. The effect is good. This is reminding me of kind of like mod or like 60s. Yeah. Like it has that kind of like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get a theme song for next time? Yes. Speaking about it? theme songs, what does everybody listen to when they're designing? Ooh. Let us know. Oh, they're saying Tequila Mockingbird is already a brand. Oh. I see. Nice. Oh. Mm, I listen to music. You I, do. I want to let everyone else answer <laughs> first. I was just going to jump in, and I was like, wait, hold on. Not about me. <laughs> what do you listen to? Depends on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing a lot of like heavy um, like writing work for like a strategy doc, mm -hmm. um, I like more of like ambient stuff. Yes, me stuff. too. Um, video game design, or video game music. Yes. And theme song music uh, is really good. Mm -hmm. It's a really good way of just like having background noise. Yeah, it's so epic too, at least like original soundtracks. Yeah. You really feel like you're like going on a journey. Have you, what were your thoughts on the King Arthur movie? I had the most recent one? Yeah. I didn't see it. <sighs> Shall we talk that? more about it? I loved it. A lot of people didn't like it, okay. but I absolutely adored it. Um, maybe. <laughs> it got really bad reviews, I think. Yeah, I feel like it went yeah. like pretty quickly <laughs> out of theaters. It's like one of my favorite movies, I think. So what do you like about it? Just the music? The the music is incredible on it. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought like, um, who's the, the guy who produced it? What movie is this? It's the King Arthur movie um, with the guy from Sons of Anarchy. Oh. 
and who's the director? It says Guy Ritchie. Yeah, Guy Ritchie. So it's like very typical his like style of movie where it's quick edits, fast paced, oh. and very different approach to like how you typically build a movie. I see. Um, so to me, that was really interesting. <laughs> Tim says, so bro, the spinoff brand of Sorbo. So, so bro. bro right now. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> we can like partner with that all day rose like mm -hmm. Instagram company. Oh my gosh, yeah. Rose all day. Brunch and mimosas. Yeah, that canned rose <laughs> company. Mm-hmm. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so you like the music from King Arthur. It's so epic. It's like epic. one of the most epic soundscapes, I think. Huh. But cool. I've been listening to the Undertale soundtrack Ooh. a lot recently. It's like chip tune, but has a lot of heart. It's not just like ding, 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 ding. Like there's, <laughs> there's a story. <laughs> Ooh, a little circle, a little flower. Yeah. No, I don't know. This is all like take it or leave it. There's no right answers yet. Oh yeah, the circular one does say so, bro. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> got us. <laughs> it got in my head. <laughs> so bro's here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Uh, Lost Rest said, I heard some folks got migraines watching the King Arthur movie. Probably. Why? I, Just because it's so ch 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 Yeah. The intro scene where he's like growing up as an adult mm -hmm. is like, or like he kind of starts off as an orphan um, and kind of tells his whole story and it's kind of a really just well edited. Hmm. But I could be alone in this theory and I'm okay with that. I'm glad that you like, like something that is not typically liked. Good. What as did you just do? I, what did I just do? Yeah. I just shortened the, the heights of the... How'd you do it? I double clicked it and then took it and then I shift options or alt to drag from the middle. Mm -hmm. So if you're using the new Photoshop and you're used to that, it's the opposite. It's the old way. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> where shift alt drags from the center and yeah. it makes it equidistant. Um, oh. Which Photoshop is always tripping me up. Mm -hmm. with Especially that. with the updates. You're like, which yeah. one is it? <laughs> Help me. Exactly. Ooh, other people are saying they like the Undertale soundtrack. Yes, it's so good. I'm working on finishing it right now. It gets pretty tough at the end. Not gonna lie. Uh, Luke says, if you don't turn every single letter into a member of a mariachi band by the end of the stream, I'm gonna be really disappointed. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think we have enough time for that. That's oh. a lot of work. Luke, will you do it for us? Yeah. <laughs> Take a screenshot. This is the new creative challenge. <laughs> Yeah, I can zoom in if you need it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Blanco. See, I like this typeface a lot yes. for the actual beverage labels, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure if it's gonna work for the actual brand name. I think this this typeface could work really well for any collateral, um, but maybe not so much like continuing it as just like the Sorbo. Mm -hmm. I think we could do Sorbo and like, then all caps and then decrease the size. Oh, is that the same typeface? Yeah. It looks so thin. different. Yeah. Wow. But the C, is, the C gives it away and mm -hmm. the B. <laughs> yeah, the Bs. I love the, the, I don't know what the word is. See the typesetting issues. Yeah. Um, you yeah, know. But the B, what is that? It's not, is it, it's not an ascender. It's not a descender. It's you mean the, the X bowl? height. Oh. But like where it comes in the middle, right? Where the, the B, like, where this area is not touching. I see, like, ooh. What, it, what is this thing called? Somebody tell us, but while you're telling us, we're yeah. about to do our chat and win. Very exciting, so this is a time for you all to get logged in on Behance if you are not already. If you're over on YouTube watching, come over to Behance so you can participate, be.net slash live. We're gonna be giving away this beautiful hardcover Moo notebook with lay flat technology. Ooh, ah, someone was asking um, what it looks like inside. It is lined. So there are thin lines, and then the center has some nice kind of thicker, actually, ooh, it's see-through, and it's invisible. Ooh, invisible paper, wow. it's the new high tech. <laughs> it's lay flat and invisible. It's awesome. So to get people uh, entered into the challenge, you need to say something in chat, and usually we ask them a question. So what should we ask them? What do you want to know about them? Hmm. I feel like everybody asks, what's your favorite color? Yes. Hmm. If there's one place where you would travel to, what would it be? Yes, let us know. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> the 
We're back. All right. So somebody says Japan, Mercedes. Me too. Thank I want to go to Japan so bad. Oh, it's going to happen in 2019. I feel it in my bones. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Alexander says Barcelona. Ooh. Barcelona. Ooh, Germany. Ireland. Africa. Where in Africa, Lauren? Um, <laughs> Mercedes says I've been a lot to Japan, so got to go back. <laughs> yeah. Joshua Tree. How about you? Where do you want to go? I've been really fortunate to travel the world for skateboarding events. Oh, cool. Um, but the one place that I've always wanted to go is to Japan. Um, and they've had a couple races there, but haven't been able to go for that. But I really want to go snowboarding Japan. Oh my gosh, yeah, like Nagano or yeah. somewhere up north. Those videos of just watching people in powder that's like above their head is, you need a snorkel and it's incredible. A <laughs> snow snorkel. Yeah. Amazing. All right, we have our winner. It is uh, Anayansi. And a Yancy Tano Yero, congrats. Congrats, you're gonna enjoy that. Yes, so oh. we are gonna be sending you a flat uh, lay technology filled hardcover Moo notebook. Very amazing. Behance, or we'll be in touch with you on Behance and your messages, so keep an eye out for that. And if you did not win, please do not despair. If you'd like to get a discount, you can go to moo.com slash adobe live and get 15% off just for being here, just because we're thankful. Uh, Moo is an awesome place to get your business collateral printed out. They specialize in all kinds of physical goods, such as stickers, flyers, postcards, business cards. Uh, they do some beautiful like gold, gold embossing or letter pressing. Uh, really cool and nicely priced, so go check it out. Highly recommend. Congrats. <laughs> they, they said their first time you win something. Oh, great. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks for being here. That's it's great. always hard trying to like participate in things and then never winning and then you're like, one day. Yes. One day. One day I will. I would do that a lot when I would watch Twitch. Like people would be like, all right, we're doing a giveaway. Yeah. I'm like, there's no way. And then one time, it was my first time watching someone stream and they did a giveaway and I won. What'd you win? A little magnet that they That's made. That's it? Yeah. But it was cool because she made it. <laughs> yeah, that it, is awesome. Yeah. There's all, so many incredible creative streamers out there that just make incredible pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chat, do you watch any other streams uh, besides Adobe Live? Let us know. We're interested. Oh, yeah, it's not Sticker Mule this time. It is the 15% off Moo. There you go. Leslie says, just got here, love from Toronto. What's up, Ooh, Leslie? Toronto. Good to have you. I was just watching Terrace House last night. Do you watch Terrace House? No. It's like a reality show, but it's set in Japan. And they're in the northern Japan. They're in Nagano <laughs> right now. Or, but they're snowboarding and it's awesome. Have my love at snowboarding. Mm -hmm. There you go. So is this your brief? So I make a little brief for myself. I have a really hard time just making things just mm -hmm. for fun. Uh, so I like to like narrow down the constraints as much as possible. Okay. So like I kind of walked you guys already through the demographic and the about um, and then the kind of goal. Um, but I always like want to have um, like dimension. So I've already la measured out all the labels and kind of like the spacing that I can build out um, for the packaging, right? Oh, so cool. I've already measured it. I know wow. what I have to work with. I know that the artboards need to be a certain size. But then because this is an alcohol label and I want it to be as realistic as possible, I have <laughs> the TTB regulations up. Oh, right? that's so, what it's called. Uh, yeah, it's the tobacco, tax and tobacco. Bad some, Girls Club. Yeah, tax tobacco beverage board, I don't know, bureau, <laughs> something like that. But you have always have to kind of have the government warning, a mm -hmm. barcode. Um, and then like the alcohol by volume. Mm -hmm. And so since I already know what items I have, it makes it a little bit easier just to like have that information ready to go. Oh, cool. So you just copy paste. Nice, because you want this to seem like a real brand and not just tequila you make in your bathtub. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think anybody, and so like one of the things I've been trying to like understand from a packaging perspective mm -hmm. is I've seen a lot of liquor companies not have the alcohol content in the front. Hmm but the majority do. So I'm like wondering, because you have to get everything approved by yeah. companies. I wonder what um, the, the whole story with that is. But it makes a really interesting constraint for you to have to work around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, that's a lot of text. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> as you can see, as it like wraps around through all the artboards. Uh -huh. um, so if you ever copy paste in your text like this, you can actually just double click the little white icon on the side, and then it will make the bounding box so you can just um, shrink it. Oh, and then nice. fit it. 
Cool. Yeah, there's so many different ways that you can add text. Like you can either just click and type. You yeah, can just do the click and drag. Box. Yes. I love the lore maps of a feature that mm -hmm. has been added mm -hmm. pretty recently, right? Like, yeah. That was like this last year. Last couple updates, yeah, as I like to nice. say. <laughs> Christina says bathtub tequila sounds cool and bathtub gross. Bathtub tequila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> just experiment in there. You never I know. I like it. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> uh, oh, Justin says they do have a certain font size you have to use for that uh, TTB or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, the TTB thing. It's some some companies, and this is where it gets a little bit harder if I want to photograph it myself. Is mm -hmm. like I don't want to have to mask and like warp warping around a cylinder is always really difficult to make yeah. the rules look good. Um, so I'm trying to like include everything into a single la label mm -hmm. uh, rather than like having to fake print on the bottle. Um, just like little things like that, knowing those constraints of what I have to do for myself for this to project to look good at the end mm -hmm. um, kind of helps narrow it what I can do. Gotcha. Okay, Justin says that the uh, percentage can be on the back label. It just depends how you file your request, I guess. Wow. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> That's Thanks, brilliant. Mr. President. <laughs> That's great. Whoa, See? what? Gabriel says that he's on the last episode of Terrace House. No oh. way. Oh, 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 you're watching it. You're not actually on it. Okay. Did I you ever excited. watch um, Money Heist? No. Or I think it's called like uh, House Casa de Papels in the Spanish version. It's on Netflix. Like House of Butterflies? No, it's supposed to be the House of uh, Paper. Oh, So Papels. it was like originally, I think it was supposed to be House of Cards. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but it's about Bank Heist and it's in Spanish originally. It's so good. Huh. So good. Interesting. Um, if you can like, if people like subtitles or dubbing, it's like a highly recommended one. Very cool. I love, I love that. I don't mind a good uh, subtitle for sure. That's awesome. So you said you listen to like soundtracks for movies. Do you ever yep. listen to podcasts? Uh, I used to, but then I found that like if I was listening to them, I'll listen to some TED Talks sometimes mm -hmm. or some like creative streams when I'm, when I can focus on two things at once, yeah. it's really hard to like listen to a podcast while I'm mm -hmm. designing. Because then I'll start typing something and then I'll start typing the words. Yep. So I typically will like listen to music of some sort. Got you. Yeah, I think doing things like digital painting or sketching is great for listening to podcasts or like having a movie on in the background. But uh, Adobe Fonts. Adobe Fonts. Fonts.adobe. There you go, fonts.adobe.com. <laughs> I always do that with Adobe Stock. I yes. Use. Adobe stock, and then it brings up the stock price of Adobe. And you're like, oh, nice. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, Adobe Fonts is awesome. It is so great. I'm waiting for Adobe Fonts to be integrated on Behance. Oh. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So like when you're updating your projects? Oh you my can gosh, use them? I would love that. <gasps> you hear that, Behance? Do you hear yeah. that? Behance Do gods, that? please. <laughs> They're listening. Yeah. We're inside Behance right now. Behance. Yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to choose from like the eight typefaces that are currently on there. Mm hmm. Cool. Adobe fonts, browse fonts. Let's so, see if I can find something that is a little bit easier to work with. Nice. This is super cool. So you can put in the sample text and it'll show you examples. Yeah. You can show it up a little bit easier. So this is a great way to quickly browse fonts that you might be interested in to mm -hmm. use a little bit too textured. I kind of want maybe a lighter weight project or a lighter weight typeface. Maybe a lower X height, maybe a medium. And what is this gonna be used for? So I'm thinking right now, everything feels so condensed and so tall. It just feels like you kind of just took everything and just scrunched it mm -hmm. uh, and do doesn't feel right. Or like if I wanna complement the labels, knowing that I wanna use this typeface for the labels, mm -hmm. I should probably balance that out with maybe a like less tall yeah. typeface up front. Right. Cool, and if you have a CC subscription, you have access to all the fonts, thousands of them so on Adobe nice. Fonts. Yeah, it's super duper easy, and you can even do it from within the app now. Oh yeah, you can do it on the top corner, right? You can go to the fonts. No, actually like in Illustrator. Let's show. What? Yes. Okay, so I didn't, I thought that was only pulling my own. So, I'm, so if I go here, I can do the, I love this part where I can select Hello, select. So that I can filter it now, which is awesome. Uh -huh. So if I want here. It might just be in Photoshop, but if you go to find more, there. Oh. Oh. 
and it'll do a live preview. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you can do by size and you can filter it in the same ways. I'm baffled right now. This is incredible. You're welcome to do it how you were gonna do it. No, this is, <laughs> this is so much better. Yay. I'm glad it worked. Wow. <laughs> Uh, Taylor Cashton says, hey, Alex. Oh, hey, Taylor. How you doing? What's up? Taylor's awesome. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's out in Riley. Rally? Rally. Rally. Mm -hmm. Rally. Running all things AIGA over there. Oh, very cool. That's awesome. And Kyle uh, Chicoin? Chicoin? <laughs> Welcome, Kyle. <laughs> no apologies for being late. Hello. Good to have you. Hmm. This is the most time consuming thing I think of every design project yes. is finding a typeface that feels like it could work. You can also check out different weights and things. So if you twirl the little arrow down next to it on the left, oh. it's like too much. Oh my God. Too much power. This is incredible. <laughs> and then of course it went away. <laughs> yes. Did you I lose your place? Right. <laughs> this is awesome. I had no idea. Yeah, so it's definitely an Illustrator now. I think it's coming to Photoshop soon. Okay. Uh, but you can still get to a, uh, Adobe Fonts through Photoshop by just clicking the little type kit icon in there. Hmm. It's very helpful. Oh yeah, it says Sobro again. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> it does I just keep too. doing that. <laughs> I'm Sobro we, right now. <laughs> dude, oh. <laughs> Tell me about it. I, and I keep just retyping it. I don't know if we can do Sorbo anymore. Sorbo. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It's literally all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Taylor says you're going down the rabbit hole. Yeah, I know. It's happening. It's a good one to go down, though. It's tough. Does ever, What's your favorite typeface? Do you have one? Mm -hmm. Like Baskerville. Baskerville. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Classic. My favorite typeface might be... <laughs> I'm just remembering all the times at Twitch when I kept championing for this typeface. Yeah. Um, it's called Cooper Hewitt. Okay. Um, it's the Cooper Hewitt Museum in New York. Uh -huh. was, built this typeface with Pentagram or Pentagram. Built it for Cooper Hewitt. It's open source. Um, it's gorgeous. Um, yeah, it's so cool. And so you can just download it. They have a really cool page where I think if you tag them in projects that you're using it for, they'll feature it. Whoa, that's uh, sweet. Which is so so cool. It's a really, look at it, just beautiful. It's, mm -hmm. It stacks really well. Um, it makes really great all caps things, and I really like all caps. Wow, so did Twitch ever get, like accept your championing? No. Um, no, 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 no. There, it felt the, the idea was like not using a free typeface. Oh. But it's really hard to have like uh, a brand typeface that isn't custom built um, and has the usage rights for hundreds of million users per week, you know? Yeah. Or per it's month. A big license. Uh, yeah, it's huge. Like a web font for that, the licensing gets insane. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was championing for it. It was like, it's a great typeface. It works really well. It plays really well with the brand. Got you. Got you. Oh, people are saying their favorite typefaces. We got Dido, Avenir. Comic Sans. Don't say Comic Sans. Don't say Comic Sans. <laughs> <laughs> I love Gil Sans. That is a good one. Gil Sans is great. Mm -hmm. Color fonts are a thing, yes. So you can dynamically change the colors. That's awesome, Tim. Thank you for the heads up. Hmm. <laughs> Jason says, every time you say Sorbo, I think of Kevin Sorbo. He's from the show Hercules. <laughs> it's a good, good thing to think of, I guess. Yeah. Wow. Download. Is it downloading? Yes. Thank you, Creative Cloud. Thank you, Creative Cloud. Thank this is cloud. brilliant. Woo I'm so happy that it's <laughs> now Adobe Fonts and not Typekit anymore. Yes. Typekit was great, but the additional typefaces that were are supported now is mm -hmm. so nice. Yeah, there's so many foundries on there. Like I said, literally thousands yeah. of typefaces. And you can look at collections too. So we, there's like a zine collection, that's mm -hmm. a skate park collection, one for making posters, wood, wood print kind of stuff. Just go check it out. Fonts.adobe.com. <laughs> Tommy says that's a great haircut. Thank you. <laughs> oh, UT Longboard, UTD Longboard Club. What up, Tanmay? How you doing, man? Woo! So I built the the first uh, 
like collegiate sponsored longboard club uh, in the US. You built it? I built it from the ground up. What do you mean? Uh, I was the, so by that time, I think I had a pro model skateboard or I was about to have one. Mm -hmm. I was really big into longboarding um, and saw that people were on campus were riding around on scooters mm -hmm. and longboards and bikes. Um, and so I gathered everybody up and started getting everybody into racing and teaching everybody on Friday nights and stuff like that. But it was actually like one of my first fun branding projects to take on. Built like a whole logo, lockup, mm -hmm. website, photographing everything. And yeah. just like love that aspect of uh, working with like full cross brand, cross medium. Yeah. And, everything. and you're so passionate about it. It's something that you love. Yeah. It's super easy whenever you're the creative director of your own mm -hmm. project. Sometimes. Sometimes it is. Yeah. Sometimes not. That's true. So what did you study in school? I graduated with a degree in communications, essentially. Okay. Um, essentially, I, I was wanting to become a mark, like work at Wyden and Kennedy, which is an agency in Portland. They do mm -hmm. incredible advertising work for uh, Nike and mm -hmm. Old Spice and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So I was really big into advertising. Yeah. Um, but our marketing program at the time didn't have a very good um, like portfolio program, and so I had no idea what a portfolio was. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm doing all this client work already, but I don't know how to represent or get a design job at an agency. Yeah, interesting. Um, so then I kind of had a panic mode in like junior year. And I was like, I need to make a portfolio mm -hmm. or else I'll never get hired. <laughs> Joke's on you. Yeah, then I got hired. <laughs> yeah. So you were successful in making a portfolio? Uh, I don't know if I'm even successful in making a portfolio currently. <laughs> I think you are. I've seen your Behance. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's mm -hmm. fine. I'm always comparing myself to like firms that are way bigger than me. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really tough because I'm like, oh, what what's Collins doing? What's mm -hmm. uh, like those those firms in Mexico City that I was mentioning? Like, yeah. what's Anagramma doing? What's Yee Yee doing? Um, it's really hard whenever they're like. 25 people, 30 people, and it's like... Yeah, you're just you. Just me and a couple of other designers in Portland, mm -hmm. and very much not them, which is fine. Maybe it's the someday. imposter syndrome slash like self-doubt that a lot of creatives have. Yeah, yeah, but I'm glad that That's you okay. set your eyes high, like you're looking at these big things and comparing yourself to them. Absolutely. It's, it's that competitive brief. mindset. Yeah, so would you comp consider yourself highly competitive? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I want to like always push myself and like learn and grow. And I don't like being bad at things, which is tough. I'm trying to learn oh, product photography right now. Yeah. Uh, and so like that's a really fun process and it's helping my design work and understanding how lighting should be on things. Mm -hmm. Like if you ever do any product photography, it's also really good for like button shadows and mm -hmm. drop shadows on projects because then you start understanding how, why certain things work well. You know? Yeah. Definitely. That's cool. So when you are bad at something, is your initial instinct to drop it, to stop doing it? Uh, no. No? It depends on what it is, right? Like there's some things that aren't interesting to me. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I'm kind of like all or nothing when it comes to a lot of things. So yeah. like I picked up playing hockey without really ever skating on an ice rink. You're just like, I'm going to play hockey now. Yeah. And so then you're like, thousand dollars two thousand dollars worth of gear <laughs> into it and you're like well i've got to get good at it somehow yeah uh, and i went through like the whole first season without learning how to skate backwards wow <laughs> so, do you still play uh no i don't <sighs> i was trying to play in san francisco but like the closest place is in oakland okay and so like having to ride a motorcycle with like the ninja turtle stick and backpack oh my gosh that sounds terrifying that for like two seasons but it gets crazy across the bay bridge yes <laughs> like the crosswinds i had like some gnarly crosswinds of like 65 miles an hour crosswinds i'm just gonna get picked up and you're just getting pushed across from lane to lane yeah and i was like yeah not not worth playing right now but no, i'm gonna thanks. I'll get a car again in Portland and then I'll start playing again. Okay. He said it here, folks. Yeah, it's happening. <laughs> Keep him accountable. That's awesome. Richard says, there is no bad being bad at something. Yeah, but like whenever you're always comparing yourself to other people, and I don't think that's a good thing by mm -hmm. any means, uh, perspectively, like your perspective of what you should be doing or how you should be doing it mm -hmm. sometimes is your own detriment to your own success. Yeah, definitely. So. I'm playing with all these different typefaces. You get lost in it. I'm getting so lost in it. It's just not <laughs> clicking right, and that's okay. Yeah. That but that's part good. of the process. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that graphic for like the peaks and valleys? This is like being creative. 
I've seen something like that. Yeah. Maybe I've seen the one you're talking about. Oh, it's like, I hate it. I love it. Burn it. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. Exactly. <laughs> and then it's like, do, and you're like, well. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's okay now. Get money for it, I guess. Ooh, that's very short and wide. It is very short and wide. It almost has, um, what is it, Cooper, Cooper plate, copper plate? Oh, yeah. It has a very similar feel to it. Or Baskerville, maybe? I feel you. <laughs> Eric is saying, mm -hmm. I will go play with you when I go to Poland. Do you mean Portland? I mean, <laughs> let's do it. Let's have a pickup game in Poland. Yeah, that's a good reason <laughs> to go. It's like, I gotta go to Poland. Why? I gotta play hockey with Eric Sue. Oh my goodness. There was an opportunity for a $500 round trip to Dubai to play a hockey game in their mall. Um, and I passed it up because it was during finals in like college or something. Oh man. But I'm still kicking myself for not playing ice hockey School. in Dubai. Yeah, right? That sounds very non-sustainable. And hockey rink in the, the desert. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, yeah, it'd be an experience for Once in sure. a lifetime. Man, that's wild. So chat, let us know if you're just joining us. We got Bojana, hello, Roman, hello, hello. He says, take a look at the Type Wolf for uh, font combina combinations. Type Wolf has a lot of really good things. Mm -hmm. um, Bethany Hack's videos are really good as well about type pairing and all that good stuff. Her, her eye and attention to detail when it comes to type is absolutely incredible. Wow. Um, she has some really good talks. Like I think there's, I think two or three like two hour, one hour videos of it, and it's just incredible. Get educated, people. Yeah, Bethany Heck, go check her out. Mm -hmm. Oh Taylor, that's a good call. If you have your filters on, then that might be stopping you from seeing some stuff like Baskerville. Taylor is a wizard, man. Thanks, Taylor. That's a great thing about chat. They're keeping an eye on things. I know, I love helping it. us out, reminding you to save, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> you like my untitled two? How far are we into the stream? Yeah. 53 minutes. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Good thing Illustrator is so um, stable. It won't crash on you. <laughs> I can break it so fast. You want to know how to break it, guys? Maybe. <laughs> uh, vector textures. If anybody's oh, ever made vector mm -hmm. textures, yep, it'll yep, make yep. it chug. Man, uh, Alex Greenling, I think his name is. He does live streams and he does a thing where he tries oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to break things, like how many points are in a vector illustration. It's, it's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, will it blend? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> will it blend? <laughs> Alex so is good. awesome. Yeah, he's funny. He's, man, him and watching him and Justin Mazel. Yeah, we love uh, Justin. They just have so much talent in their pinkies. Mm-hmm. Um, I know. I just clicked a font that I wanted and then there we go. No, bro. Noble. Neighbor. Neighbor. <laughs> um, I'll save. Command okay. Shift S, guys. How you do it? Mm-hmm. Shauna says, Sid tries to break Photoshop with her files anytime she tries a new device. That's nice. funny. Classic Sid Weiler. Yeah, trying awesome. to break it. <laughs> That's cool. Lindsay, yes, we're trying to make it crash. Yeah. After saving, of course. Say, working file, exploration. Of course. Ashi's very happy with all of these fonts. Is Me she? Me too. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. Because <laughs> I'm struggling right now, and that's fine. It's a good struggle. I think, I mean, it looks good. Looks yeah, I'm liking good. how rounded this is compared to how funky the bottom part is, mm -hmm. so maybe that's okay. Yeah. Um, but maybe not. But maybe not. There's a million different opportunities. For so sure. true. And below us, chat, you can see that we have our design feedback countdown. Ooh, 34 minutes. Yes. So this is a little bit different. We haven't really done this super often before. But if you tuned in earlier and saw Val's Daily Creative Challenge, it was day one of the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. And we're challenging you to make a Facebook event invite uh, asset. And she used the frame tool, so we want you to be like bringing in photos, transforming them, putting them in different frames. You can check out all of the info about that in the replay. But if you post your work in the design feedback channel on Discord, Alex and I are gonna be looking through the submissions in 30 minutes, giving some feedback before you get those posted out into the wild. And Gus is laughing about something. <laughs> I just never know <laughs> what's going on over there. That was Shauna. Feedback. <laughs> Did I say feedback? 
Oh. <laughs> Oh, feedback. <laughs> We're just having a day full of typos. Yeah, it's Tuesday. <laughs> it's, yeah. You it's know. The not Monday of the week. <laughs> so good. So yeah, come join us on Discord. I think it's bit.ly slash PS Discord, I think. Gus will nod if it is. The dis Discord link? PS Discord? Yeah. Is that it? Okay. Yeah, it's in the challenge tab. It's in the challenge tab. There we go. Isn't it nice when Gus comes back in the studio and we can just yell questions at him? <laughs> hey, Gus. <laughs> hey, you over there. Did you know Gus is also a, a skater of sorts? I didn't. I know that he's a fellow uh, ICP fan. <laughs> <laughs> Juggle up a life. <laughs> but if anybody does know how magnets work, we're still wondering. Yes. <laughs> Very true. Um, no, he's a blader. You're a, a rollerblader? Nice. Team Puppin' Sons for life. Still. Oh, man. Well, like, it had, a, it had its days. Uh-huh. It was like an early, late 90s, early 2000s thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no offense, Gus. Nah. It's okay. He's bringing it back. It's when you peaked. <laughs> I think we all did. <laughs> he almost went pro. It's a real thing. Really? That's yes. awesome. So aggressive, I'm assuming? <laughs> nice. He'll show you some tricks after there you the go. stream. <laughs> Let us know, chat, any bladers out there, fellow bladers, skaters. Rip stickers. Rip stickers. That reminds me of back scratches. Back scratches. <laughs> Team Pup and Suds, yes. Lost Rest says, didn't think I'd hear a reference to ICP on Adobe Live. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Alex. <laughs> yeah, we're making uh, collaborations between everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. Ugh. Wait, oh, go ahead. No, it's good. No. <laughs> uh, somebody just said it's Wednesday in chat, and I was like, what? Is it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for Kushal. I'm not sure we're here um, at Kushal, but it's Tuesday where we are. <laughs> oh, yeah, Shauna is a blader, but she's more of a knife booter. Man. Instead of a fruit booter. <laughs> her, her skates, she got some fancy skates. Yeah? I saw them when she was here last in SF, because mm -hmm. I would, still hadn't moved yet. And they're so pretty. What are they like? They're like... Painted? They're white leather with these like stars on them. Ooh. They're pretty fancy. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was a belated April Fool's joke from Kushal. It is not <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> it is Wednesday, Nat. <laughs> Nat, Paz <laughs> Nat. <laughs> Uh, Kyle says, I used to skateboard until I had a nasty concussion. Oof. Ouch. Yeah. Put those helmets on, kids. Man, helmets do not save you from concussions. Though. No? No. I've they had save some, you from dying? I had a mom turn away. Mom, don't listen. Don't listen. <laughs> oh, no. I had a really bad motorcycle crash mm -hmm. uh, last or the last season I was racing uh, where my helmet the visor for motorcycle racing gets pin locked. So it's like a Formula One where it like locks down. Mm -hmm. My helmet, I hit so hard that the front visor ripped off. That, was... that really rips your head in a direction. Yeah, it was like, that's how hard I hit it that it ripped the front face of the helmet off. Oh my gosh. Um, but that didn't stop me. No, wow. And I went, I fixed my bike and I raced again the next day, which is, not what you're supposed to do. Oh my gosh. And I got second place. <laughs> so, but yeah, not not smart. And Definitely I, not the smartest move. Yeah. So don't do that. Don't do that. Doctors, not worth it. Doctors don't approve of that. Mm -mm. Your brain doesn't approve of that. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Please don't. Uh, Lost says, I like where this bouncy type is going. Yeah, it's this is kind of like the idea that I was having originally with just like the bounciness of the type is really fun. Mm -hmm. I want it to feel like I don't know. This feel this typeface feels like what a tequila night in my head oh, is. Yeah. It's like a little bit fun. It's a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. Um and a little bit different. Oh my gosh, MotoGP in Portland. I wish they had a MotoGP track there. Is that uh, just a track type? Uh no, MotoGP is the like governing road racing body. Oh, okay. Um they have a track in Austin. Mm -hmm. Uh they do have a road racing track in Portland. Um I think it's called Portland International, mm -hmm. um, and it's really, I haven't gotten to ride it, but my favorite out here is Sonoma. Mm. It's super technical, um, and it's really, really fast and long. Interesting. Hmm. And they have NASCAR out here in Sonoma, and Formula 3, or IndyCars as well. 
So lots of little, lots of racing things out here. Lots of things going zoom. Yeah. That's what that says in my brain. <laughs> There's a winery out next to it too. Uh -huh. And the winery always complains about the noise. I bet. But they were second. They like, they put that plot of land there mm -hmm. after the race was there. Yeah, they need to like capitalize on it somehow. Yeah. Instead. Nico says, is that why your head is uneven? Because <laughs> you got wow. the concussion. <laughs> Savage. No, Nico. Brotherly <laughs> love. <laughs> <laughs> he always has something to say about my haircuts. Some. He's just jealous. I know. That's brotherly love. <laughs> Roman says, don't ride the next day after a huge crash and don't work on a file for 51 minutes without saving. <laughs> Handing out life lessons. Man, guys, it's okay. You got to have a little bit of risk. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I've had some files crash on me before. <laughs> Shocking. And, yes. <laughs> um, and then I found that I've built them faster the second time. So. And they're better the second time. <laughs> It's a nice yeah. little design exercise. Mm -hmm. I do, I've said this before, but when like my illustrations have disappeared or exploded and yeah. my files have crashed, like the second version is always better because you get to draw it again and practice again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, Signal Noise, AKA James White, yeah. used to stream a lot on Twitch as well mm -hmm. and got to work with him on some Twitch stuff. Yeah, that collection, the Chrome one. Yeah, so fun. That's but awesome. he streamed like the majority of the process and him and Alex Grinling both have save emojis for like their Twitch chat oh. to like remind them to save. Yes. And I think Alex has a control Z or command Z mm -hmm. a counter. So every time he does an undo, he like has a oh, counter like in a the bot. corner saying like, you've, you've undid <laughs> your steps like 430 times. Oh my gosh. That's super fun. You've undid yourself. Yeah. Man, uh, auto recovery is cool. I agree, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> but says, it slows down your computer, so just turn that off. Yeah, you don't need it. You gotta go fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of this game. <laughs> go fast. Just kidding. Don't do that. Auto recovery is amazing. Yes. I've had some close calls where I thought that I had just lost two hours of work for a client, and auto recovery saved me. So. Don't turn it off. Yeah, that's helpful. Let's see. Cool, this is interesting. This is feeling very different from the initial kind of iterations you've done. Yeah, so this is kind of what I was thinking would be like a good label, um, like kind of interesting label where the, let's see here, I can pull in the photo that I have of this. Ooh. So this is all natural lighting and pretty, like a pretty small, um, like pretty low lit. So mm -hmm. it's not as white as it should be. But if I wanted to just quickly mock up what a label could look like, I could just throw in white. Uh, command two to lock a layer for all you people that haven't worked with that. Mm -hmm. It's always so fun cool. picking up somebody else's Illustrator files too. Yeah. And seeing what they grouped and what they didn't group. Yep. Yeah, that's very interesting just even working on any kind of project that you're handing off files. Yeah. You gotta think in a different way. Which things are grouped, which <laughs> things are locked, yeah. which things are hidden. Mm -hmm. It's always fun to like, uh, command three is to hide layers, and then command alt three is to bring it back. Oh. Um, so if I wanted to just hide it, just command three, and then I just command alt three, and it brings it back on the screen. Nice. Which so is super nice. when you hide it, Yeah. so if you were to hide something, mm -hmm. and then if you go into outline mode, so hide and then command Y, you don't see it. Yeah. So how do you remember gone. it's even there? What if it's just gone forever? Pro tip, I never <laughs> hide things because okay. I always lose them. Yeah. But I always, whenever I pick up somebody else's files, I might do it just to see what's there. Oh. But yeah, I love, uh, I love, love uh, command Y. Mm -hmm. So nice. Yeah. So the outline mode, if you ever are trying to find layers or trying to line them up really nicely. It's always a really good way of doing that. Yeah, yeah, if you're trying to look for little points that you might have missed. Mm -hmm. Or well. if you're trying to snap and you're snapping to pixel instead of snapping to point. Yep. Things like that. Totally. Always good. What's up, Huxel? I see you in there. Is there an easy lock in to unlock? Yep, so if you just do command uh, two, it'll lock it and then command alt two is to lock. So I'll show you like command two. I can't, I can no longer click these layers. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's clicking. Too, yes. Just to just bring him back out. The one thing is it's not like Photoshop. So any layers that you lock, they'll all unlock yes. at the same time. Yes. So if oh. you have multiple different clicks. I know. And then you have to like remember. think about how things are grouped and if you're locking all of it. Yeah. Ugh, that I run into that all the time. Yeah. 
it's frustrating. Yeah, uh, I always love the like paste in front of and paste behind. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you wanted to paste behind something, oh no, see, it's all unlocked right now. Command two, lock it. Yep. Grab it all with Command C. Then I'm gonna go Command V and just place it. But if I wanted to place it behind these layers, I could just do Command B, and there you'd see it's like behind yeah. the white now. Uh, but I don't want to do that, so I'm gonna press Command F. Oh, cool. Do our front. Blanco. Blanco. Mm. Raul says, "Where do they go when they hide?" That's a great question. Let's dive into this. I'm gonna have to more. go um, <laughs> ask the illustrator team. Yeah, let's go find them. Where do they go? <laughs> it's a <laughs> black hole. Yeah, they're like, we have your vectors. Yeah. Any sci-fi fans here? We can start a whole sci-fi thing about mm -hmm. where layers go. Where do they go when you close your eyes? When you blink, are they still there? Exactly. It's like a, a sound in a forest. Yes. I wonder if there are any like Adobe product conspiracies. We should start them now. Yes, let's do it. This is our conspiracy corner. <laughs> yeah, the original Adobe office was in the Denver International Airport. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Tim says when your vectors disappear, Hannibal Vector eats them. That's Ooh, pretty good, Tim. That Tim's is quick. Good. Yeah, it's very quick. He's our best. He's our best quick Tim Mo best. <laughs> Like he branded himself that way. For yeah, a I think so. Uh, Zach made a Billy Eilish Eilish joke, and I don't listen to her, so I don't get it. <laughs> Zach, please explain. I'm sorry for my ignorance. Hashtag don't blink. Yeah, Frederick, don't blink, or your vectors will be get eaten by. It's a Doctor angels. Who reference. Yeah, oh, man, classic. Man, I haven't seen the new one. Me neither. I think I, I started watching it and I think I got through like the first arc. And I was oh. like, I'll take a break and I've never gotten back into it. Yeah, the uh, Amazon Prime has, um, I guess, the season before the last. So Ooh, I caught up finally. Nice. And then I really wanted to watch the new season. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't. Darn. Is it a new doctor? It's uh, the lady doctor. Oh, the lady doctor. Nice. Aw, Peter says, what's up, Alex? Hey, Peter. And he's saying, see you at Creative South next week? No. Peter. He knows that. He's just rubbing it in. How rude. <laughs> uh. It's like Peter doesn't have the roster of who's attending or not. No, definitely <laughs> not. But you will see Gus, Peter. That's awesome. Get some good Gus time. Yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> You're going, Gus? Mm -hmm. Have you yeah. been before? No, first time. Ooh. Uh, there's a Waffle House, so that's exciting. Are there not Waffle Houses in California? No, I don't think so. Uh oh. Is there a Waffle House here? Anybody know? They definitely have in, oh. them in Ohio. <laughs> yeah, they're they're definitely a southern thing, but I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. He says shade. So where are you from originally? I'm from Texas originally. Okay. So Whataburger is better than In N Out. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna get really, really heated in debates today. The sweet tea is being spilled. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and pineapple does belong on pizza. Oh, oh man. Hot fruit is not fruit. <laughs> <laughs> you can have your opinion, so I'll let you have it. <laughs> Peter Hot says- Hot fruit is not fruit. Is what do, not what do you fruit. call a, a banana's foster? What do you call it? I don't know. <laughs> what even is that? A banana's foster is the like, uh, <laughs> It's like when you flambe banana yeah. and caramelize it is and it put like it in on ice fire? cream. Yeah, it's on fire. You call it fire. It's fire. It's lit. Mm -hmm. do, it do, is do. lit. Do, do, What's do, do, up, do, do, fellow do. kids? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my teens. <laughs> Gotta turn around on your seat. Yeah. Have it in front Just, of you. <laughs> where's the skateboard over my shoulder? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Texas represent, Samantha. Uh, Jen says Waffle House is dead to me. No whipped cream? Dead to me. Wow. <laughs> I mean, Mitch, not wrong. No. There's no what whipped cream though. What do they have instead? They have grease. Yeah. That's all you need. Just whip it up real fast. You get whipped grease. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kita. No fruit on my pizza. Oh goodness. Are you just reading the positive comments about no no <laughs> yeah. pineapple? Huh. Yes. <laughs> no, I literally don't see any people saying that they want pineapple on pizza. That's fine. 
That's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll start a Pineapples Anonymous group. Yeah, but I'm also the heretic that doesn't even like cheese on my pizza. So. That's not pizza then. Okay. <laughs> Convince me. <laughs> what do you put on your pizza? Red sauce. Just and red sauce and vegetables? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your brain's like. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Can we get a different host for tomorrow? <laughs> no, we kidding. should have a pizza pizza off. <laughs> yeah. Or a mukbang, and we can each eat our own pizzas. There you go. Mm hmm. <laughs> I don't know how I'm liking this type right now. It's, it is getting a little wild, it's just like this so dream is. It's getting so wild. Yeah. <laughs> We have an ICP debate, pineapple oh debate. Gosh. There's no debate about the ICP. It's just <laughs> the truth. So how did you, is that an italic? Is that why it's tilted? No, I just tilted it. How'd you tilt myself. it? Myself. I just took the edge. So I just took the edge of it and was like, boop, mm -hmm. just grab it. Very simple like. Gotcha. So but you're not skewing it. You're literally just rotating just it? Just rotating it. And I'm still keeping this as a type. Um, as, what is it called? An open type? Because I still want to mess with the typeface. See if I can make it a little bit more potentially thin or bold, because mm -hmm. uh, I want to make sure it feels like it's part of the rest of the letters without getting too wonky. I'm not doing a variable type system for the rest of it. Gotcha. So I want it to all kind of have a similar feel um, in terms of width and things. And maybe the N is a little bit weird. Yeah. Maybe the O is a little bit weird, but I don't know. I was trying to get the letters to play a little bit nicer together. Yeah. Um, rather than this system, I don't know. What do you think, chat, my creative directors? Yes, let us know. Right now I've got, let's see here, I've got, like, this is nothing. <laughs> this is nothing, trash. Trash. <laughs> um, I got this like hockey stick looking guy. Yeah, I should have liked that better. Kita says your text is wild like your pizza choices. Man, it's <laughs> great. Not wrong. Not wrong. So I, got, yeah. I've got three different options. Do a one, two. Oh, okay. So they're saying that three is reading like block no instead of blanco. Oh, interesting. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you put the N up and fit that little C where the N is, you wouldn't have the cool little sh block no. You're right. Um, so yeah, if I did this and took that, let's make an option four. got 15 minutes till design feedback. Yes, so we so. have 15 minutes to decide <laughs> and to argue about pizza. Absolutely. <laughs> Maybe if I bring over some of the anchor points from the end, mm -hmm. and then whoop, I'm just gonna select these guys. Cool, and so just using direct select. Yep, and then just drag, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Just, just, just do what I'm asking. Please, Illustrator, you're embarrassing me. Gosh, all my friends are watching. <laughs> Whoa. Well, that's wonky. Yeah. Um, I... Where's the hoods by sisters when you need them? Yeah, right. They're so good at doing type. Jen, Amy. <laughs> Please help. <laughs> they just descend upon us like angels. We're here to help you with your anchor points. Their book was really good too. If you haven't read it, Fabas. Oh yeah, Fabas. Super good if anybody's trying to get into the freelance world. Mm -hmm. Or just understand how to run their business a little bit better. Yeah, but like with a design-minded approach. So Correct. you won't be totally lost if that is not your... Uh... <gasps> Leon Ingram, what's up? Oh lordy. Oh lordy, lordy, lordy. <laughs> Leon and I have a project we need to get done. Oh yeah? Oh my goodness, I'm not doing this right. Whatever, I'm just gonna cheat. Still see if it this. works. Ooh. Um, but yeah, Leon is absolutely incredible. He's helped me out with a bunch of projects for my firm. Nice. Um, which is awesome. But Leon and I have dreamt of starting our own little skateboard company for a long time. Yeah, you guys are both boarders. Yeah. Hmm. It's getting weird. Yeah, it's starting to read like a U, kind of. Yeah, I want it to like, I need to stop not pressing shift. <laughs> That'd be ideal. Don't forget about the shift. Shift. Uh, Kyle says Brandon Reich is also very good with type. Good to know. Yeah, mm -hmm. the name is familiar. Yeah, 
Definitely. <laughs> Leon says, you asked for the Hood Sisters, but you only got me. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> it's fine. I'll take you and Leon. Yeah. Bye, Huxel. See you later. Uh, UI says, this is awesome. Ooh. I agree. <laughs> Very nice to hear. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, UI says, wait a minute. I need to watch you closely. Oh, no. Okay. Watch closely. I've been making the same click and try to attempt it for the last 15 minutes, so <laughs> you could probably take a break if you needed. Ooh, okay, it definitely reads more like Blanco now, though. Yeah, it's starting to, I'm trying to figure out how to play with it. Maybe this needs to come up a little bit more, mm -hmm. just so it has some of it. Right. Ooh. But maybe that's getting a little bit closer. Maybe I just put it on the baseline. Right. Oh, that's definitely an N. Wee! Yay, it's yes. an in again. It has a nice squared feel too. Yeah, it's a little bit different from the original uh, type part of it, mm -hmm. but I, I'm not mad about that. Yeah. It seems to play off the A a little bit better, which is nice. Ooh. Oh, so Brandon Reich, who does good type apparently from Kyle, says he does all music industry apparel, also the branding for 21 Pilots. Oh, that's awesome. Man, there's cool. so many incredibly talented just artists in the the uh, music industry as well. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I mean, the moral of the story is everybody's talented. Yeah, are they? Okay, maybe not everybody. No, everybody. <laughs> everybody's got like a skill that they can contribute to something. Yeah. Yep. I'm wondering, maybe that's a little bit better. Bringing the B up so that not everything has to be on the bass line. Uh huh. Maybe the C note goes up. Well, people are really liking this version now. Woo! Yeah, at first I think people were liking number two, but now everyone's saying four, 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 four. Yeah, it's starting to feel a little bit better. It's a little bit more playful now. Mm -hmm. um, there might be something later on that like I could do to the A so it doesn't feel so... Yeah. Just default, I think, is the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the most normal of all yeah, of the characters Yeah, everything right else now. feels a little bit more f playful. Hmm. Um, Cool. It'll come to me. But essentially right now, I don't want to change the left side of it because it has a nice part at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's just shifting over the A to feel a little bit more like it's falling to the right. So maybe it's just the top heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very wide. Mm -hmm. So maybe the top just comes over. Maybe the bottom goes Ooh. over just a little bit. Anna says, this font reminds me of the Brady Bunch and the Jetsons. The Very Jetsons, retro. man. I've been really wanting to go back and just rewatch the Jetsons. Yeah, I was thinking about the Jetsons the other day. I don't know why. They just had, I don't know, the whole, the whole space. Mm -hmm. It was like mid-century modern space. Yeah. And just like kind of that retro excitement mm -hmm. for what space can offer. Yeah. Super exciting. It's like the alternate un universe to the Fallout games. Like if they're, if the humans had escaped Earth <laughs> instead of being blown up on Earth. Did you play the Fallout 76? No, not 76. Good idea. Good <laughs> idea. Yeah. I haven't played it either. <laughs> I'm just gonna be one of those people that's like hating it. Yeah, but I've heard. I was so excited for it. And mm -hmm. then they kind of just botched the, the intro. Turn it. I know. I mean, West Virginia is pretty cool. But I love how that song became so popular after that trailer mm -hmm. again. It was like everybody's singing it. Mm -hmm. So like, come on, guys. There's it's a, a Korean singer on Twitch who blew up because his voice is so deep and so incredible, and he sings country roads, and he like that's awesome. I think I might have heard that potentially. Yeah, he he got really big. That's awesome. Good for him. <laughs> Ah, she says Jetsons was the best, so many good ideas. Yeah, it was really creative. Like yeah. you got to see all their inventions because everything was made up. It was kind of like the Flintstones. And the the sound effects for it and mm -hmm. everything was so just so fun. Yep. Totally. So that's is that Hanna Barbera? I think. Let's see. Hanna Barbera Jetsons. Yes. So good. So classic. Nice. Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about the A still. I think it's still feeling a little bit wonky. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. 
everything else has like this square cap. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, maybe it should not. But then it feels weird because everything else has this straight top. Right. Um, hmm. But everything else is angled. So it makes the A. Yeah. You have a little bit of wonkiness with. with like here. Yeah. Maybe if the in the this part, <laughs> the part that fills it was yeah. tilted, but like the A was still yeah, straight. Yeah, that's a good idea. Who knows? Mountain Mama. I Mountain know. Mama. You're trying to make me cry. Yeah. Don't do it. All right, chat, we're going to start singing along to Country no. Roads. Oh. <laughs> it's such a heart, a heart uh, tearjerker. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Sam says, I was in Dublin for St. Patrick's Day and everyone was singing Take Me Home Country Roads yeah. in every bar. <laughs> it's like, it's awesome. It, uh, it spreads across all countries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so good. Chat, don't forget that you got about seven minutes left to get your work uploaded on the design feedback channel on uh, Discord. So if you are totally new, we are doing a Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge for the next two weeks. Voodoo Val is running that at 11.30 every day, Monday through Friday for the next two weeks. Every day is going to be a different challenge. So today's challenge was to make uh, a cool Facebook asset uh, using images that you're going to be transforming, reflecting, using the frame tool, what have you. You can find more information over here in the challenge tab. But if you get that uploaded into the Discord channel on the design feedback channel, bit.ly slash PS Discord, uh, we're going to be doing some reviewing. Yes, there's the link. Thank you. It is case sensitive too, so the P and the S need to be capital. Uh, we're going to be looking over your submissions and giving some feedback. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very handy. I mean, Alex is a professional designer. Professional. Professional. <laughs> So his feedback will be uh, really, really valuable for you. And it's free. Wow. It's free. Mm. You get what you pay for. <laughs> just so kidding. nothing. <laughs> um, oh, you're going to switch it out? I, I feel like it might Ooh. be a little bit fun, like, doing that, where it's upside down. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that kind of feels like a shot glass, too. But maybe not. Maybe that's the opposite of what I'm trying to intend. Totally good. Well, so we have a hood in chat now. Amy Hood is here. Oh my goodness. So Amy, hood, what do you think? Save me. Help us. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> What's wrong with my A? Uh, what <laughs> if you take the top anchor of the counter of the A and bring that down? So the counter of the A. So I think that's the hole in the middle. Mm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. make that space a little smaller. Yeah, that actually feels like That's better. cool. Did yeah, you just fix it, Amy? <laughs> Thank you, Amy. <laughs> She's like, hello, is this thing on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Thank uh, you, Amy. All right, we're done. <laughs> yeah. Now we have two more labels, so stick around. <laughs> Woohoo! So cool. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Amy. <laughs> Bye, Amy. <laughs> As you ascend back to heaven. Now? <laughs> no. <laughs> Who knows? Leon's very excited that we're using Discord. Leon yes. has been He's been trying to get me to move my my team Slack over to Discord as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's weird because I always assume that Discord's like a gaming yeah chat. Same. Thing. Like I have my Maple Story Guild here on Discord. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's weird because I don't want. I have so many different Twitch uh, ones as well. Mm -hmm. So I sometimes don't want that up as like a com as a communications device. Yeah, right. But, I think I there's good it. things about both of them. Absolutely. We're really missing the nested comments in Discord. Like you yeah. can't start threads, which is frustrating. Yeah, absolutely. But it, it feels much more like a community. I feel like people are digging the Discord. Let us know, chat, if you are on Discord. It's free. You can just come hang out and chat. We've got um, Adobe people. We've got mentors in here pretty much all hours of every day. So you can post your work for feedback, ask questions. Tim Mobest is posting amazing Ooh, nice. pro tips. Uh, Tim's obscure pro tips. <laughs> so <laughs> every day, I think for the next 11 days, he's gonna be unlocking a new pro tip. But isn't this amazing? He made this just, just for fun. That's awesome. Yeah. So we got wow. cool looks. We're doing seamless patterns seamless today. Seamless patterns. It seems like we've got- Are you using got Photoshop a, or Illustrator? I think it's all Photoshop. Yep, Photoshop. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, Illustrator nice. seamless patterns, man. They're so much fun. Yeah. Cool. So go check it out. Everyone come join Discord and hang out with us. It's bit.ly slash PS Discord. Tommy says that this is looking Hawaiian, like Tiki Looks bar. Looks Hawaiian. Huh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I guess I can see some of the like, I could see this. I think Shauna had a really good point earlier about this feeling, the type feeling a little bit kind of like the, uh, well, I'm blanking on the name. The Disney movie. Uh, Which one? The <laughs> one about the Day of the Dead. Oh, Coco. Coco. Was it Disney or Pixar? Disney Pixar. Is that one? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Leon's like, I worked on that. Yeah, that's Leon. <laughs> I am Coco. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Like Coco's that. soundtrack was so good. We were literally listening to it this weekend with our baby niece. She That's loves awesome. it. She walks around with the ukulele and oh screams. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so good. So cute. She's the best. The <laughs> yeah, Arf Coco. The e feels so weird. Because it's so normal. It's so normal. Mm -hmm. We're having the same issue with the, the A earlier. Uh, but we can... Maybe, actually, I think the lowercase e might have a little bit more flavor. Oh, here, some e flavor. Some flavor. Nice. I'm going to bring it in like Guy Fieri. <laughs> you like flavor? Flavor Town. <laughs> Wait, isn't that his chicken tenders place? Isn't it called Flavor Town? Is it? <laughs> I think he has a restaurant called Flavor Town. That's incredible. Guy Fieri. Flavor Town. Did you know they have a um, Coco Makes Me Cry? Yeah, it's crazy. It's so good. Two more minutes. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, Coco is incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have a Guy Fieri con in New York where everybody dresses up as Guy Fieri. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Look, I'm getting the beach ball death. Okay, no! time to save. Yes. <laughs> That's typically when I know when to save. Blast your cash. <laughs> so what is this convention? Does everyone just put on the So everybody puts on, they things? get they get the, yeah, so you can, I think, Amazon Prime, a Guy Fieri spiky hat and mm -hmm, visor, mm -hmm. and then you wear, like, your little, like, Oakley sunnies. Yeah, and, like, get a sunburn. <laughs> uh-huh. And wear, like, a Hawaiian flame shirt. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And there you go. You're set. And then you have uh, workshops where you talk about like the best diners, drive-ins, and dives in the area. <laughs> it's more of like a bar crawl, I think. Oh a, my gosh! A, like a true to form convention. Yeah, right. Man, what a world we live in. Repo. All right. I'm gonna start a repo company. <laughs> yeah, a very nicely branded repo company. So cool. Uh, Lost said, I learned that he only wore a flame shirt like once ever. Really? And now it's like his uniform. That's incredible. <laughs> yes. Um, Zach says, do you guys listen to My Brother, My Brother and Me or does it just keep coming up accidentally and I have a problem? Do you listen to My Brother, My Brother and Me? It's a podcast. No, I I don't. I've never heard of it. <gasps> uh, Leon just started a podcast. I saw that. Um, I'm interested to listen, Leon. Yeah, I was going to do it on the plane, but I... Couldn't get signal to download it Darn before it. I flew. All right, next time. But I'll listen to it this week. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Zach, I love Mabim Bam. I'm going to go see them tomorrow in San Jose. What is it? Super fan. It's the podcast, My Brother, My Brother, and Me. And what do they talk about? It's a comedy podcast. It's three brothers who oh, nice. like answer questions and like go on Yahoo Answers and find the most ridiculous ones. Oh, man. There's like a whole mythology with it. There's some lore behind it. That's very good. Hmm. I think you'd like it. Sounds good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Zach, you're not wrong. I've been interjecting little <laughs> mannerisms for sure. Ashi says, branding is so interesting. It is. It's mm -hmm. super fun. Yeah. Like, I've had the, oh, design feedback. Oh, yeah. It is time. It's time. Totally. Uh, so, chat, like we said earlier, we're going to be looking at design feedback from the Discord channel. So if you have worked on the first day of the Daily Creative Challenge for the Facebook asset, get it uploaded on Design Feedback. We're going to get through as many as we can in the next, like, 20-ish, 15, 20 minutes. Um, just work through it, give you some feedback, maybe say something that's super strong and then something you could work on. So this is it. This is Discord. Hello. 50, 60 new messages. So we've got quite a bit to go through. Um, I think Maria is the first submission. And I've already given Maria a little bit of feedback, but like I said, this is for like an event invite on Facebook. 
This is an event invite on Facebook. Like awesome. the, the header yeah, yeah. image. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, this is really cool. I like the the like text effects that you have going on and the like background shading. Yeah. Um, those layers are really nice. Uh, I always find it weird sometimes how Facebook might crop things. Mm, um, yes. So like you might not be able to see if it's on mobile, you might not be able to see the thirteen oh four and mm -hmm. the nine. 30, yep. you might only be able to see that middle section. Yes. Um, so that's something to double check and just make sure, and especially if you're making the event calendar yourself or the event invite, mm -hmm. um, you might be able to just upload it, check it on your mobile, check it on your tablet, make sure there's no cropping issues. Yeah. Um, just to start. Yeah, and I gave, who was this again? Maria, a little bit of feedback saying that this right segment felt a little empty. So maybe if this is not a safe zone to have copy, you could move it over here. Perhaps. Yeah, no, totally. And I think, yeah, you have a lot of negative space on the right mm -hmm. that you can play with, um, playing more type in there or something. Totally. Uh, Nicely done, Maria. Give you a yeah, thumbs those up. Those colors are super fun. Aren't they? It perfectly matches yeah. with the Zumba class for sure. I definitely want to do Zumba now. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Dana, here's my first challenge. Kind of basic, but it's a start. Cool. Yeah, I like the the overlap. I think my favorite part of this is the the circle overlay that mm -hmm. breaks the grid. Yeah, um, I think that brings in a lot more of that fun. And it creates a more interesting dynamic. Yeah, with the content. Definitely. But yep. good use of colors for sure. Yeah, I was gonna say this is all the images seem to go together. They yeah, so it has a nice flow to it. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I'd be careful about is the the type can sometimes get lost um, in there, and I think mm -hmm. that's if. The, like I said, the cropping again. Uh, but then also sometimes if you're looking at it on a smaller phone, you might not be able to see the type because it's pretty thin and yes. that's that could be the aesthetic you're going for, but mm -hmm. just something to keep in mind. Yeah, definitely. Nice job, simple, but it's a start. Totally true, Dana, nice mm -hmm. job. All right, this is by Volks, hashtag testing. Hashtag testing, I like it. What is this? Beauty, spa, relax. Oh. So it looks like we have two different versions. I like, let's go to the bottom one. I think. Mm -hmm. So this is a beauty spa brand type thing? Seems like it. Um, interesting. I like the texture a lot. I mm -hmm. think that the like fabric texture um, can look really good and it adds a little bit of value to it. Mm -hmm. A little bit of like care and finesse. I think, um, one thing to look out for, so like we're looking at this screen over here too, mm -hmm. and the texture is kind of making it look like the type is aliased. Oh, uh, yeah. So it looks a little bit jagged. Yeah. Um, so again, just looking at things, it can, it doesn't look like it up close, but right. kind of on another screen. And this is how you would look at it on Facebook. It would be smaller. Correct. So. On, on Facebook, it, mm -hmm. it wouldn't look so bad. I think the angel might be a little bit. It almost feels like a League of Legends character mm -hmm. more than it does like a relaxing environment. So yeah. I think just making sure that your messaging is also reflecting with the visuals that you're doing and just yeah. balancing them out. Um, but like color wise, I think it has a good spa presence to it. Yeah, um, earthy. Super earthy. And again, the texture is kind of fun. Nice job. And chat, you'll notice that people are in here giving feedback. Um, so when you post your work, please ask if there's like a specific thing you're mm -hmm. not sure about. like. I'm not sure about the color palette, what do you think? Because um, that gives your critiquers a little bit of frame of reference. Yeah. All right, this is by Picala. Cool. Ooh, that like type glory. is really fun. Yes. And I can kind of see the the uh, the tutorial that Val is walking through mm -hmm. with the offsetting the backgrounds and the yep. foregrounds and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That's really cool. Yeah, it makes it look cohesive, but still different. Yeah, and then the gradient map on top of it is yeah. kind of fun. So. Nice. Yeah, that's really cool. Do you find it's readable enough? No, I don't find it super readable, but like sometimes that could be the intention. Yeah. Um, like if you're trying to draw to the piece and say, glory is like the mountain range and like nature, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. like maybe that's okay that you're trying to intend for it to be a little bit more blended. Um, mm -hmm. If you're trying to not, then I maybe you just bounce the, the background or the mask that you have currently going on in the background. Yeah. Maybe you adjust that up or down so that there's mm -hmm. enough contrast in the mountain range yeah. so you, you can read it a little bit better. Yeah, specifically over here. Yeah. It just gets a little tough to read. Yeah, absolutely. Nicely done. Give you a little thumbs up. All right, this is by Tristan. Montreal. Whoa, this is cool. Yeah, this is super in right now too. This yeah. is like uh, kind of 
outline offset type stuff. It was and really cool. And the overlay. Mm -hmm. um, really cool aspect of bringing that thumb back through the, yeah, the type. Yeah, yeah. Super fun. I love the lockup on that. Um, yeah, I think it, it's really nice. I think I think it's something that I'm struggling with right now as well on my own thing that we're doing. It's like sometimes the readability on it is a little bit off, but mm -hmm. I think that's also okay. Yeah. Like that's completely fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you think about this second little hit of this graphic over here? Yeah, that second hit doesn't make as much sense mm -hmm. um, kind of being in there. It feels like the mask doesn't need to be there. Yeah, it's a little uh, faded out too where everything else is pretty yeah, it's sharp. It like, like it looks like you're masking for the hand and the, the plants mm -hmm. is really clean. Um, so I think if you're going to incorporate that masking in the background, maybe you do that as like the full background piece or like ghost it that way. But I think it doesn't need that, the little foliage on the side. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think it's, it's, it's really cohesive and it looks really dialed. Yeah, nice job. Yeah. So it says Montreal, Montreal, Montreal. <laughs> <Over Nice. here. laughs> cool, cool, cool. Now we know what it is. Yes. <laughs> so in case you didn't know, it's Montreal. All right. Nice job giving feedback, everybody. Oh, there's another version from Volks. Nice. Nice. Let's see. Beard BG. Completely misunderstood the ask. Here's the rework. Awesome. Sick. <laughs> awesome. Um, really interesting. And uh, the the color on there is. Like, I like the natural color of Hawaii on there. Mm -hmm. um, I think it gets to be, it feels, so I get, I've been playing a lot of Apex Legends lately mm -hmm. um, and the kind of the bar kind of concept going yes. on. So the first thing I think about when I see that color overlay on top of the black and mm -hmm. kind of gray background mm -hmm. is kind of like video game structured oh. uh, color blocking, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't feel as Hawaii to me. Yeah. Um, so I think you have like, a really great image of Hawaii. Um, and I think there there's an opportunity to take the kind of concept that you're working with with the color blocking, and then maybe it's like you were seeing a lot of people, especially like with how Val was doing it with kind of embedding it and making it feel a little bit more surreal mm -hmm. or just a little bit more like a postcard. Yeah. Uh, but right. I, th I think your the look that you have right now is really cohesive. It feels... Um, like you've got a textured kind of approach with the type, and then you're trying to also texture the background. Um, I think it all depends on what you're trying to go for, mm -hmm. um, for the, out the outcome for it. Yeah, right. So like, I think you're right on the money. There might be two different kind of attempts right now, and maybe mm -hmm. you can just choose one and dial everything into that different style. <laughs> Zach's asking where the Mozambique is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know when I tag it, Zach, that's fine. <laughs> All right, Laura, I went a little nuts with layering the frames and realized my text isn't centered. Oops, that's all right. Cool. Oh, wow. That's cool. It's like space. It does lavender. feel like space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that a space layer that you put on there, or is that just the uh, lavender with just a different opat like layer on, layer filter on it? It looks like this is actual like spatter or stars. Yeah, but like at the bottom of the lavender field. Yeah, no, you're right. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. It really meant like these little tiny highlights. Look yeah, it lavender looks exactly like it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's nice. cool. It, it, yeah, it feels really good. Mm -hmm. um, it's readable. It's readable. It's done everything that was kind of like in the challenge. I think it's really mm -hmm. well done. Yeah, I, I like the fact that we can't really tell how you did it. It's kind of like on the the pen and teller like fool me. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, is that the lavender or is that the space? Like <laughs> the lavender it's, or the stars. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool that the the stars and the lavender tie so well together. Yeah. Nice job. I don't know if that was an accident, but it was lavender a Lavender image accident. with stars in the sky. Cool. Oh, cool. All right, here we go. Be nice, newbie at this, Gerard, don't worry. <laughs> April inspiration. Cool. It's, it's clean and crisp. Yeah, it's super crisp. I like mm -hmm. the the saturation that you have on the the uh the photo itself, like it feels very vibrant yeah, and very nice. inviting. Mm -hmm. um, and I know Gus is wanting to go fishing immediately now after seeing this. Oh yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I, I think you did a great job. Yeah. I think the one thing to be cautious about is whenever you do the like color swatch in the background mm -hmm. behind the layer, the lettering, um, I know the intention can often be so it's like more readable, mm -hmm. but sometimes you just muddle that a little bit. Yeah, like right here, it gets a little yeah, it gets a little bit tougher. Um, 
And so I wouldn't be afraid of just like leaving the type on there. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe you just condense the type a little bit so it's not breaking the bounding box and then maybe the type is white and yes. it's just kind of sitting on that horizon line of mm -hmm. the water and it just fits and feels a little bit nicer. Yeah. Uh, but no, this is a great job, especially being a beginner. Good. Totally. Nice job, Gerard. All right, Trixie, I've never used the frame tool before, probably won't use it much in the future, but for now I have some ideas for what it's good for. Sweet. Cool, so this is your new Facebook uh, header image. That's awesome. Nice. Also, I think Hayes Valley has Patricia's Green is the name of the little park in Hayes Valley. Oh, think. really? So That's automatically, cool. you've already won me over. Yeah. It's a cute little dog park. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, super cool. It's a really interesting uh, like tiling pattern effect you made in the background totally. too. It feels a little like far style-wise from this like kind of sparkly, literally sequins, I think. Yeah, I think it's because of the scale. Um, uh, so you have such a large tiling sequin scale in the background mm -hmm. that it doesn't feel as like one-to-one -one that mm -hmm. maybe you're intending for it to have. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the horizontal bars aren't necessarily like necessary in mm -hmm. my eyes. I mm -hmm. think um, I think I would just want to know the understanding of like what the intention was behind it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if maybe even just cleaning, like pulling out those bars, then you'll start to see a little bit more connection with the tiling in the background. Yeah, definitely. I would also say you have a nice black stroke around the name and you also have a drop shadow. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you need both because they're both kind of doing the same thing of adding the contrast to make it more readable. Absolutely. Yeah, but cool, I'm glad you got a new Facebook header image. Yeah. That's the point, that's great. Smiley face for you. <laughs> All right, Alicia or Alicia, here we go. Oh, cool. Ooh, it's kind of like Argyle Harlequin pattern. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I just did a checkerboard vodka brand type oh. thing, and so checkerboards are very much in my wheelhouse right now. Yeah, I love the aspect of bringing in, it looks like, what, five different, potentially different ocean scenes into mm -hmm. those tiles. Yeah. Um, which is really incredible. Um, and bringing them in, I don't know how you brought them in and made them all feel like the same uh, photo, but I'm assuming probably camera raw. Oh. Which is a pretty awesome expert thing that mm -hmm. you might have picked up on other streams yeah. here. So I like that you've made all the photos not feel completely different. Yeah. Um, which is really tough. The yeah. type in the background though, I can't really read and yeah. I don't know if that's the screen. And I think yeah. it's just a little hard to read on the, mm -hmm. that like pink beige is really kind of difficult to read on the, the light yellows and blues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you need it. Oh, is it April inspiration again? Yeah, so then a different type face. I think just saying it once, probably good mm -hmm. enough. Unless you're wanting to like bring the layers back and forth where you're playing with the mm -hmm. the script type through the actual uh, serif type that you're running. Yeah. And then bringing it like kind of weaving it in and out. I think that might be a, an interesting way to do that if you're really trying to double reinforce it. Gotcha. Uh, she says that it's the same image, just rotated in many different ways. Oh, cool. Yeah. That would explain why it feels so cohesive. <laughs> but I don't know, to me it looked like a different one, so yeah. good job. Nice job. We'll give you a wave emoji. Ooh, that's a good one. All right, here is the pagoda made from photos from a recent trip. Love oh, to see sweet. that. Cool, so oh, all awesome. the different frames. Got some circles over here, some squares over here. Yeah. Hmm. I love street art, so seeing like mm -hmm. graffiti and street art into it is yeah. always my my favorite. Um, Looking at the oh, interesting! Look at those, frames. yeah, the framing. Man, I haven't done that or seen that in so long. That's that's awesome. <laughs> that used to be like how you used to display things on Behance was like to zoom in on a yeah. certain part of your case study. You just do that all the time and like do the pinch zoom thing. Yeah. So that's awesome. That technique is great. Um, I'm not sure you need all the explainer stuff. Mm -hmm. I think maybe instead of having the art from the street, or maybe it's Bogota art, and then take off the from the street part, mm -hmm. and then you have an opportunity to play with the scale of those images and then bring them up to be a bit bigger. Yeah. So that way I get more of that those those photos in there. Yeah. Because um, that's what really what I think you're trying to highlight and show. Mm -hmm. So I want to see more of that because that's really cool stuff. Yeah, great point. Nice. Give you. Praise hands. All right, here's Sam. Pretty literal translation of the example today. 
P.S. Come visit Dallas. <laughs> come visit Dallas. I, I went to school in Dallas, so I need to need to go back. I was supposed to do a talk there soon, but mm. we'll see. Okay. Uh, Dallas, great food scene. Oh, um, didn't know. Yeah. Nice. Really good food. Um, I think there is a lot of framing right now. I think if you just took off one more of the frames on the inside, it might be a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. I think it's trying to pull me in. Um, and maybe there's, maybe it needs to focus on something. Like, there's a lot of things competing for a hierarchy, I think, right Very now. Very true. Um, I think the image you have is really, really good. Um, I'm not sure you need to have the type on it. Um, but maybe that's just because I'm biased and I know what the Dallas skyline looks yeah, like. Yeah, you're like, we um, get it. But like, right now, it's, it's pulling me in. Like, you've got the double dip down. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, already looking and it's got a horizon point on it already. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm already being drawn into the towers. Um, but the type on top of it's pulling my focus back out again. Oh, um, and yeah. then because it's overlaid, I'm still trying to read it across. So I think if you remove one of the frames maybe and then remove the type, it would, the composition would have more of a focused thing. Yeah, maybe you could still include the type, but in a more uh, a smaller way, mm -hmm. more of like a second hit of information. Absolutely. Nice job. Oh, give you the me emoji, Ooh. the Kathleen emoji. You but have an, your own emoji? Yeah, yeah it's amazing. <laughs> it's like a Twitch channel. Uh, June says, first time using the frame tool. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, it looks like a ripple. Yeah. Oh, man. Well. I love the, the the shading in the photo. Mm -hmm. It feels very much like, a, almost like an album cover. Yep. Um, like almost if you just increase the the inside ring mm -hmm. to be a little bit bigger um, and maybe move the like the circle mask over, I could see that being like a really good album cover of just mm -hmm. like for a vinyl CD mm -hmm. or for, for a vinyl disc. Um, yeah, I think it's really cool. Yeah, this is a really simple execution of the technique, but I think that image that you chose has a lot of power. Exactly. Behind it. And just like like you did with you just reversing it, mm -hmm. it just changes the, it becomes really surreal. Mm -hmm. um, the yes. Forefathers guys did a kind of a circular branch with mm. kind of that dark foresty vibe mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. very similar and it, it was executed really well, really well, really well. Nice. We'll give you a scream emoji. Ooh. The scream. All right, we'll look through maybe two more. So this is from Voxy Lady. Can frames be transformed to different shapes? Mucks around in Photoshop. Answer, yes. <laughs> yep. Cool, what game oh, is this? Is this Zuma's Revenge, Zuma? Oh is my this? gosh. <laughs> Wait, no it's not, but it Bizarre looks, the type reminds me of that. Was it Zuma? With what like you spit the little this? ball from the frog's face and it's like the. I have no idea. Oh my goodness, it was like a pop cap game back in the day. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Throwback. Yeah, so good. Wow. Cool. So this is kind of doing a similar thing that the mm -hmm. the river thing was where this hue kind of adds this grayness that yeah. you might not need, especially because this typeface already has a nice frame around it. It's going to yeah. be readable. Yeah. I, I, I really like the, the type on there. I think the mm -hmm. type works really well with the game graphics. Yes. It feels very cohesive. Mm -hmm. um, I, like you said, I don't think the color backdrop behind it really is necessary because you're pulling the colors from the right image into the, the frame in the middle anyways. Mm -hmm. And then it looks like you're texturing it with the actual game art itself. Um, yeah. Oh, so, wait, yeah, you can see the level design here. Yeah. So I think you've got a lot of things already going. I think if you just remove that one thing, um, it's like the opposite of what Ch Chanel said, right? Mm -hmm. Put another piece of jewelry on. Yeah. Add more. Yeah. Just the opposite of that. Yeah. Cool. Very nice job, Boxy Lady. Okay, let's look at one more. And then if we don't give you feedback, no worries. You're still going to get feedback in the channel. Uh, just not live. Yeah. All right, this is by Prowling Monkey. Did you get photos of Leon's cats? Is this, are the, no. is this Leon's cats? <laughs> That'd be great, though. Uh, uh, so Prowling Monkey is talking about using Frame Tool for panels, perhaps, for their comic. So that's a cool frame idea. Frame Tool. Mm -hmm. So that's like what this... How Got they're it. making all these frames, yeah. Man, I remember trying to do that in Photoshop way back in the day, and it was so difficult mm -hmm. to equally space things out. Yeah. Um, Look at these cuties. That's so adorable. <laughs> yeah, and InDesign has a really good frame tool now, too. Cool. And it's 
equidistant, right? It scales with the pages now. Oh, cool. Super exciting. Nice. I love the photo on the right, the bottom right. The foot? Wait, this? No. Yeah, the photo. Oh, Just like photo. The little like. It's like, hey. Meow. <laughs> yeah. That thing. And these are slightly different. I didn't realize I thought these were the same and these are the same, but there's a little slight difference. That's awesome. Ugh, makes me miss having a cat. <laughs> But cool, I think this is a good exploration of just using the frame tool and how you can use it in the future. <laughs> and cats. Yeah. Nice job. All right, so that's all we're gonna look at on stream today. But like I said, keep posting your work and you'll continue to get feedback. There's a lot more work here. I'll give wow, a quick there's little... there's so many. That's yeah. incredible. Everybody was hard at work. Jeez Louise. <laughs> Oh, some really good stuff yeah. in there. So keep posting in there and join Discord if you have not already. So we have like three minutes left. Sweet. So maybe super quick, we can just talk about what you worked on today yep. and then what you're going to do tomorrow. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so there was a lot of floundering on type, <laughs> uh, which is super fun, but kind of just starting to see how things might actually play out mm -hmm. um, with the type and the label. Um, tomorrow, I want to get the type faces done for the labels. Tonight, I'm going to explore just finding a like a nice simple typeface that complements these crazy letters just so mm -hmm. it has some order to it. Um, and then we're gonna build out the labels tomorrow. Um, I'm thinking that I wanna keep everything white and black, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Maybe it'll be some grayscale in there. Um, just trying to figure out how we differentiate the labels. Maybe the type is just enough. Yeah. Um, and then we're just gonna start playing with the collateral on Thursday. So it's gonna feel like a real brand. You should have a good basis if you're following along at home on how to build out your own portfolio on Behance mm -hmm. and start getting those clients you want. Heck yeah, and if you wanna follow Alex on Behance, you can go to behance.net slash Alex Lazarus or mm. click his little face in the uh, info tab. So we will be back tomorrow doing the same stuff again, starting the day with uh, XD, I believe, and then having Val in the middle of the day with the daily creative challenge, so day two of that. And then um, us will be doing day two. Mm. So yeah, thank you, perfect. So we will start with Mel and Mel, <laughs> both the Mel's in the morning and then Val, and then we'll be back. So we're doing something a little different. We're doing two different kind of types of work, XD in the morning, graphic design in the afternoon with Photoshop in the middle. Let us know what you guys think about this new schedule, changing things up a little bit. Bye Wade, good to see you. Um, and then if you want to follow Alex anywhere else, do you wanna like shout out any social media or your uh website? Just go to Behance. You Behance guys all have it. Good. Behance is awesome. Mm -hmm. That's where we post most of our stuff. Um, yeah. Perfect. Okay, everyone, be safe today. Have a good day, and we'll be back tomorrow. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>